This is the main course of our life. Not I was successful. Not I built this big business. Not that I am wealthy. Not that I am popular. Not that I am now powerful. Not that you're poor. Not here that you're um, whatever. That's our only side issues. The main issue of having God by your side. I mean, it's like in like marriage to me. I keep on telling my wife when we were single and now that you know life, life, going going anywhere in life is good, but it it's pointless for me without her around. It's a void, right? For me, it's a void. Because she's my wife. The point, the point is not the travel. The point is being with my wife. Is the point. Our life, our life's point is not just simply going to the experience. It's going to the experience with God. By our side. That is the blessing. Through all the trials, God is with you. Go to Galatians chapter 3, please. <coughs> Galatians chapter 3, verse 9 says, So then, those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham the believer. Those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham, the believer. Men and women of faith are not only sons and daughters of Abraham, but they also share the blessings promised to Abraham. You know, one of the greatest blessings that we have is our salvation, right? By faith, we are saved. By faith, we are saved. For those who believe like Abraham, they are, they are granted the blessing of salvation. We all know that, right? That's a blessing, salvation. But you know what I realized? There's another blessing. That I think few people really comprehend and realize. Not only is faith, by faith we are, we are saved, salvation as a blessing. But I find and I realize that because it's only by faith, the means itself is a blessing. Think of it. The means of receiving the blessing is a blessing. Imagine, if God required you to obey all the commandments in order to receive the blessing, <coughs> is that a blessing? If, if, the, if the requirement for you to gain salvation, the ultimate blessing, is to obey all the commandments, then the requirement is a curse. Because no one can fulfill it. It's as if God doesn't want us to be saved. But because the requirement is just by faith, that requirement is a blessing. To receive a blessing. Because it's not that hard. Not that hard. Do you see what I'm trying to say? That the requirement is a blessing in itself. Even if God told us, Bobby, Bambino, you can do all the sins in the world except one. Guess what? That's still a curse. Because he and I will never fulfill that. He says you can do all the sins. You can steal. You can, I uh, know, but just don't lie. 
o di patay, it's still a curse. Or choose any commandments that you will not, ano, thou shalt not uh, steal. If you even steal one time, one second, you can do all that. You can lie. Right? You can commit adultery. You can, you can choose not to worship God. You can choose not uh, to put the name of God in vain. You can choose that. Except don't steal. You think somebody can gain heaven? Right? You got a pen from your, from your office. I remember I was a young kid. I was stealing from my parents. I know where they kept their coins. In a Pringle. On top of the rack in the room, in their bathroom. I remember. Kulang ang baon, may backup. I was stealing already. At work. Once you're working. And during office time, not Facebook ah. Oh, that's stealing. Right? Then you, you YouTube the letter. You, you say, that's still stealing. You're st so any, any commandment that, that you are not supposed to do, if that was the only requirement, is still a curse. It's as if God doesn't want us to succeed. But the fact that the requirement that God gave us is by faith alone, that shows how much God wants to save us. The requirement, quote unquote, is not difficult. Why? Because somebody paid for it. Not you. The obedience required of you has been done by Christ. All we have to do is believe in that. Which shows what God wants us saved. So the requirement to receive a blessing is a blessing in itself. Praise God. Really praise God because all of us would have failed. Go to 2 Peter please, chapter 3. <clears throat> Verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. God doesn't want anyone to perish. Right? It's like saying, Son, example that though. I will give you your, um, a new t-shirt. Let's say a shirt. Let's say he likes a shirt so much. I'm going to give you, or, uh, Anton, I'm going to give you a new rubber shoes. The, the best, what, <laughs> Lebron? What's your favorite shoes? Lebron? No, Lebron, Lebron, Lebron. I'm gonna give you the Lebron rubber shoes. Only one requirement. All your grades should be A plus. I don't know. I don't know. Is he smart? But I don't know. Let's say he's just average. That requirement is let's say lang, impossible. But if I tell you, Anton, requirement is you just pass. Kait D. Is D still passing? Okay. Kahit ang average mo, D. You still, you still get the shoes. Wow, you say, alright. Right? Time to go to SM to fit my shoe. Same with God. He does not want anyone not to get the rubber shoes. He made somebody fulfill the requirement in our place. We are blessed like Abraham and we will receive the promise promise to Abraham if we believe like Abraham. 
Verse 2, just chapter 24, verse 2. Abraham to, said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who was charged of all that he was owned, please place your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear before the Lord, the God of heavens and the God of the earth, that you shall not take a wife for my son, for the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live. During that time, ancient time, celibacy was not. <coughs> celibacy is virtually unknown. Everybody gets married. 100% everybody gets married. Children the man. And, 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 and the belief was because children are a blessing from God. In fact, during my grandparents' days, and maybe Manupi, Manupi, um, Teddy, your parents, or maybe your time, diba? the more the merrier, diba? the more kids, the merrier. As I mentioned, I think my grandmother was impregnated 22, about 22 times, really more and more, more. They really want to be merry. But guess what? They end up fighting. <laughs> Whatever. That's a different story. <laughs> but yeah, the more, especially about <coughs> Bukid, right? Because it's more, more manpower. To plow the fields. So during the time, really having kids is a blessing. Now Abraham, as we saw, is old. And now what he's doing is he wants to place everything in order. He wants to fix the family affair before he dies. He's a prudent man. Kumbaga, what he's doing now is kind of like an estate planning. He was making his not even last will, but yes, part of his last will and testament. And what does he do? He calls in his lawyer. The it says here, um, Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who was in charge of all that he owned. In a sense, he called him his most trusted person. The oldest in his household, in charge of all the affair, shows what Abraham had confidence on this guy. He was the most senior, the most trusted servant. Why? Because he's about to give him an assignment that is very important. The mere stature of the of the servant shows the importance. He was the senior administrator. Because he wants to ensure that his will will be executed. It will be fulfilled. You know, for any businessman or boss or employer or just a boss, one of the most important traits, at least for me and I think for most bosses, is your employee gets things done. Right? Inutos mo ginawa with little supervision as much as possible. And, and, and I believe that this person that Abraham called his senior uh, servant is one of those guys. He's the guy that has the done attitude. Because he would not rise up. There, you know, even the slaves during that time has run. In fact, the names of slaves are, are tied up with their rank in, in the household. Right? And, and, and this most senior, I'm sure he got to that position. Why? Because he's the most trusted. Pag may inutos yung amo, ginagawa, nagagawa. I mean, that's the only way to build trust with your boss. Get things done. Right? During the mafia, right? Mafia movies. The big boss wants to liquidate somebody. Calls his trusted uh, right hand and says, you know, we have a problem with um, Perisini or whatever Italian guy, right? I want him, you know, I want him to, I want you to fix the problem. What would the guy normally say? Consider it done. Ay magaling. Consider it done. 